Good afternoon, students. The topic of our lecture is infective endocarditis. Definition. Infective endocarditis is the disease in which clinical manifestations are due to infectious inflammation of the lining of the heart chambers, heart valves, and great vessels. Nasocomial infectious endocarditis manifest 48 hours after the patient is hospitalized or associated with a procedure performed within four weeks of the beginning of the disease, for example, due to the replacement of the intravascular line, swan guns catheter, etc., or developing in previously damaged valve. Microbiology of infective endocarditis. According to prospective international cohort study, organisms. Staphylococcus aureus is on the first place, 32%. Then, coagulative negative staphylococci, 10%. Viridens group streptococci, 18%. Streptococcus bovis, 6%. Other streptococci, 5%. Enterococcus, 11%. Gram-negative, including Hasek group, 4%, fungi, 2%, polymicrobial, 1%, and cultural-negative, 8%. Risk factors for specific pathogens that cause infective endocarditis. It is dental procedures or poor dental hygiene. It is prothetic valves gastrointestinal or gastro or genitourinary procedures also. Pathogenesis of endocarditis. Inoculation of bacteria colonizing a mucosal or peripheral tissue site into the bloodstream. Transient bacteremia of a serum-resistant pathogen capable of adhering to the cardiac valvular surface. It is turbulent blood flow across the valve, bacterial adherence to cardiac valvular surface, pathogen host tissue interaction resulting in vegetation formation and local tissue damage, bacterial persistence, dissemination of infection to the other tissue sites, and elicitation of systemic findings. Here you can see on this picture normal. Uh, aortic valve and aortic valve with the formation of vegetations on it. Part of physiology. The development of infectious endocarditis requires the presence of bacteria or fungi in the blood and an intracardiac surface on which they are, these microorganisms can attach. Mechanical and biomechanical prosthetic heart valves can serve as FOTSI for platelet adhesion and thrombus formation. These sites in turn provide extra surface area to which microorganisms can adhere and form vegetations. Factors contributing to the pathogenesis of endocarditis, it is hemodynamics, blood flow pattern, bacterial properties and host factors. The Duke's criteria for the clinical diagnosis of infectious endocarditis. Major criteria. Positive blood culture. Two separate blood cultures positive for microorganism consistent with infectious endocarditis. Virden streptococcus, streptococcus bovis, gram-negative Hasek bacilli, Staphylococcus aureus, or community-acquired enterococci in the absence of a primary focus. O. Oh, recovery of a microorganism consistent with infectious endocarditis from blood culture drawn more than 12 hours apart. O. Oh, Recovery of a microorganism consistent with infectious endocarditis from all of three or most of four or more blood cultures with first and last drawn, more than one hour apart, or single positive blood culture for Cusiel Burnetti of phase one 
immunoglobulin G antibody titer greater than one to eight hundreds. Also, evidence of endocardial involvement, positive echocardiography, oscillating intracardiac mass on valve or supporting structures, or in the path of regurgitant yets, or on implanted uh, material in the absence of an alternative anatomic expansion, intracardiac abscesses, new partial dehiscence of prosthetic valve. And the next one is new valvular regurgitation, increase or charge in pre-exciting member, in pre-exciting member not sufficient. Minor criteria. Fever of at least 38 um, degrees by Celsius. Immunologic phenomena, glomerulonephritis, ulcer nodes, rot spots, rheumatoid factor. Microbiological evidence, positive blood culture that doesn't meet major criteria. Serologic evidence of active infection with organism consistent with infectious endocarditis. Predisponding heart condition or history of uh, injection drug use. And vascular phenomena, major arterial emboli, septic pulmonary infarctions, mucotic aneurysm, intracranial hemorrhage, conjunctival hemorrhages, and genoway lesions. It's a minor criteria. Modify Duke criteria for the diagnosis of infective endocarditis. When it will be definite infective endocarditis. Pathologic evidence of intracardiac or embolized vegetation or intracardiac abscesses. Or clinical criteria. According to the clinical criteria, it's necessary to have two major or one major and three minor or five minor criteria. In these situations, it will be definite infective endocarditis, possible infective endocarditis, one major and one minor or three minor criteria. And rejected infective endocarditis in cases. Fem alternate diagnosis or infective endocarditis syndrome resolved within four days of antibiotic therapy or no pathologic evidence of infective endocarditis at surgery or autopsy within four days of antibiotic therapy and case does not meet possible infective endocarditis criteria. In these cases, it will be rejected infective endocarditis. Modified Duke's criteria, so clinical criteria, major criteria, it is positive blood culture, then positive echocardiogram, vegetations or paravascular abscess or well dehiscence after surgery, or new valvular regurgitation by auscultation, not echocardiogram, and minor criteria. Predisponding heart condition, including prior infective endocarditis, injection drug use, fever, more than 38 uh, according to the Celsius, major arterial emboli, septic pulmonary infarcts, mucotic aneurysm, intracranial hemorrhage, conjunctival hemorrhage. Also, minor criteria are general lesions, painless hemorrhagic lesions on palm and soles. The next one, glomerulonephritis, then ulcer nodes, rot spots, positive rheumatoid uh, factor, single positive blood culture, and serologic evidence of active infection with an organism consistent with infective endocarditis. All of them, it is minor criteria. A positive blood culture is a major criteria when, in what situations? First one, there is growth of two cessations of microorganisms typical for infective endocarditis. For example, streptococcus viridans, streptococcus aureus, or there are persistently positive blood cultures to 
positive cultures from samples 12 hours apart or three positive cultures drawn one hour apart of a microorganism consistent with infective endocarditis. Or coxilla burnetti growth from a single blood culture or there is serologic evidence of coxilla burnetti. Immunoglobulin titer is should be one, two, eight hundreds. Laboratory tests. A normochromial anemia increased ESR. Inflammatory changes in blood biochemistry. C reactive protein increased fibrinogen, alpha two and gamma globulins. Autoimmunity markers such as rheumatoid factor circulating immune complexes decrease of complement, sometimes positive Wesserman's reaction, and also bacteremia. Test is better to be taken before the start of antibacterial treatment, but it is impossible to delay treatment if blood samples for bacteriological investigation can't be taken immediately. It should be taken from different ways. Then, 10 to 15 milliliters uh, from three to five times with uh, the interval no less than 15 minutes in acute and uh, from four to six hours in subacute course. Blood should be taken for different mediums. Negative results are obtained in uh, 22 to 35 percent of patients. Urine analysis to diagnose glomerulonephritis and echoca uh, echocardiography is the most informative. Talking about echocardiography, most informative is transesophageal, revealing vegetations no less than 5 millimeters. Vegetations appear usually two weeks after the onset of the disease and remain several months after it is cured. Echocardiographic predictors of systemic embolization are large valvular vegetations, mobile but predunculated vegetations, non-calcified vegetations, ultrasonic investigation of the abdomen, uh, we can find hepatomegaly, splenomegaly, abscesses is present, if present. Radionuclide scan to reveal splenic abscesses and CT scan in case of central nervous system symptoms. Classification. Acuteness. According to the acuteness, it can be acute and subacute. Then, primary affection of cardiovascular system. It can be primary in affected heart and large vessels in acute cases. Or secondary, valve diseases, aneurysms, anomalies of vessels, prothetic valves, cardiomyopathies and operations on heart. Etiologically, it can be bacterial, fungal, viral and rickets cell. Localization on the valves, aortic mitral tricuspid, pulmonary. On the endocardium without the valves affection, endothelium of large vessels. It's according to the localization. Complications from the heart, infarction, valve affection, pericarditis, myocarditis, kidneys, glomerulonephritis, apostomatous, nephritis, infarction, and abscess vessels. Clinical manifestations. First one, intoxication syndrome. Fever can be present in uh, from uh, 85 to 92 percent of patients. Hectic type is most common for Staphylococcus escherichia coli. Appears from one to two weeks after predisposing condition, for example, tooth extraction, chills, perspirations, arthralgia, myalgia, and loss of appetite. It's also the symptoms can be the symptoms of intoxication syndrome. The second one, hemorrhagic diatesis, petechia, sublingual hemorrhages, splinter hemorrhages under the nails, hemorrhagic retinal lesions, so-called trot spots, round or oval lesions with a small white centers, and subarachnoid hemorrhage from the rupture of mucotic aneurysm. Third one, embolisms of different localizations. 
brain, including transient ischemic attacks, kidneys, heart, lungs, spleen, etc., sometimes with development of abscesses, apostomatous nephritis, multiple small abscesses of the kidney, acute septic monoarticular arthritis, and purulent meningitis. Fourth one, auscultation signs of wealth insufficiency. Sometimes acute manifestations may be present, uh, perforation, rupture of leaflet or horda. Fifth, heart failure with the signs of conjunction of the pulmonary or and systemic circulation. Six, vasculitis, general lesions irregular, erythematous, painless, Maculus from 1 to 4 millimeters in diameter, most often hypotenor eminences of the hand and feet, usually represent an infectious vasculitis. Also nodes, smallish tender nodules that range from red to um, purple, um, purple located in the um, phalanges of the finger and toes soles of the feet, tenor and hypertenor eminences, often uh, preceded by neuropathic pain, pain, neuropathic pain, last uh, from hours to several days, non-infective vasculitis due to the immune complexes. Seven, other autoimmune disorders, for example, arthritis, usually asymmetrical with one to three joints affection, Resemblance rheumatoid arthritis, rated syndrome, Lyme disease, the fluid is usually sterile. Hepatomegaly and uh, splenomegaly also. And uh, eight, clinical manifestation variant is fingers and toes clubbing in case of prolonged course of infectious endocarditis. Immunological manifestations of infectious endocarditis are hyperhemoglobulinemia both antigen-specific and polyclonal B-cell activation, may block immunoglobulin G opsonic response, accelerate microvascular damage or stimulate uh, phagocytosis, vasculitis, circulating immune complexes, hypocomplementemia, clinical syndromes, lumpy, bumpy glomerulonephritis with deposition of complexes plus complement, Osler nodes, Diagnostic formula of infective endocarditis. It's necessary to tell, is it primary or secondary, then etiology, then pre-exciting disease, and then the last one is localization and complications. Examples of the diagnosis. First example, primary infectious endocarditis caused by streptococcus viridans, aortic insufficiency. Secondary or secondary infectious endocarditis of the mitral valve, combined mitral aortic valve affection due to chronic rheumatic valve disease, amble caused myocardial infarction and the date of myocardial infarction, and congestive heart failure, third functional class according to New York classification. Differential diagnostic, pneumatic patients, exacerbation, autoimmune disease, malignant neoplasms, lymphomas and other blood-related malignancies. It's necessary to differentiate with. Course, acute endocarditis. Manifestations are mostly the same, but the course is more rapid and without autoimmune disorders. Rapid valvular destruction, valve ring abscesses, septic emboli and septic shock. Prosthetic valve endocarditis, valve ring abscesses, obstructing vegetations, myocardial abscesses, mucotic aneurysms manifested by valve obstruction and condition disturbances. Right side endocarditis, usually in intravenous drug-dependent uh, persons, septic phlebitis, fever, pleurisy, hemophysis, septic pulmonary infarctions, multiply affection of tricuspid or pulmonary valves, in aged with congestive heart failure, usually must clinical manifestations. And now a few case studies of infective endocarditis. Case one, 
A previously healthy four-year-old boy refuses to walk. He has a seven-day history of fever and fatigue. His temperature is 38.5 degrees by Celsius, and his heart rate is 120 beats per minute. He has a new systolic heart murmur. His right knee is warm and mildly uh, slow swollen. He is admitted to the hospital for evaluation and treatment of possible septic arthritis and osteomyelitis. A blood culture is drawn the first day. The orthopedic surgeon drains fluid from the right knee. The next day he remains febrile, the murmur persists, the gram-positive cocky growth from his blood and joint fluid. A cardiology consultation is required, requested to root uh, out endocarditis. Discussion of case study. In this case, a boy has a new mammal and bacteremia. In this setting, the due criteria help assess the likelihood of infective endocarditis. The memory represents a major criterion if it uh, signifies a wealth disease. It may, however, be an innocent flaw memory brought about by a fever caused hypodynamic state. Fever and a single positive blood culture both are minor criteria. These findings, however, may be sufficient to establish the diagnosis of possible infective endocarditis by the due criteria if the memory is in fact significant. Consultation with the pediatric cardiologist is warranted to help determine if the murmur represents structural heart disease. Transthoracic echocardiography should be obtained if findings on the physical examination suggest valvular disease. Continued antibiotic therapy for the septic joint and possible osteomyelitis is warranted. If the murmur is found to be innocent, the pediatrician, cardiologist, and infectious disease specialist need to reassess the patient. If the fever persists or if any other signs or symptoms of infective endocarditis develop. Case number two. A 12-year-old boy who has cyanosis and tetralgy of fallow and last underwent surgery at the age of four years, presents to the emergency department with a fever and appearing acutely ill. He has a narrowed conduit from the right ventricle to the pulmonary artery and an unrepaired ventricular septal defect. One week prior to admission, his mother pierced his ear at home. The ear subsequently became inflamed and swollen. After his initial uh, presentation, uh, his the condition rapidly deteriorates and he requires intubation um, and uh, inotropic uh, spot. An echocardiogram demonstrates a mobile mass within the homograph conduit. Multiple blood cultures are obtained before broad spectrum antibiotics are initiated. Staphylococcus aureus growth from the blood in fever, then 12 hours. Despite blood cultures obtained or in subsequent days being sterile, his condition worsened. He is taken to the operating room and the conduit is replaced. His recovery is uneventful. Discussion of this report. In, case, in this case, the presentation of a patient who has a congenital heart failure, has a fever, and appears ill suggests a fulminant infective endocarditis, which is in a contract to the 
usual indolent uh, presentation. Patients as high risk for infective endocarditis include those who have tetralogy of fallo or other complex cyanotic congenital heart diseases, prosthetic cardiac valves and fluids through narrowed areas. Unsterile body piercing is dangerous for anyone in the setting of non-congenital heart disease. However, it is it can be it is potentially lethal. Ear piercing are they performed with suspect sterile technique, or ear piercing often performed with suspect sterile technique in shopping malls should be avoided in at-risk individuals. In this case, transthoracic echocardiography quickly demonstrates demonstrated the vegetation, verifying the diagnosis under the due criteria, and appropriate treatment was initiated. The decision to proceed uh, to surgery is always difficult and usually requires uh, considerable effort by the non-surgical uh, caregivers to convince the surgeons to take an actual act to, um, acutely ill and obviously infected patient to the operating room. And this child uh, continued uh, deterioration despite appropriate medical therapy warranted a surgical approach. Evidence uh, is substantial that in specific circumstances, surgical intervention is in acute infective endocarditis can be life-saving. Case three. A 33-year-old um, recreational drug user develops a fever, chills, and uh, pleuritic chest pain uh, 48 hours after injecting heroin. He appears acutely toxic with a temperature of 104 degrees. It, it will be more than uh, 38 degrees uh, um, by Celsius. Rapid respirations and uh, agitation. His sputum is purulent and bloody. His cardiac exam is unremarkable except for his sinus tachycardia. Examination of his skin reveals a particular rash and a small soft tissue abscesses at his injection site. His blood culture are positive for uh, Staphylococcus aureus within two days. One week into therapy, he is feeling better. However, he has noticed some increased left upper quadrant pain, and on examination, you are able to palpate his spleen. Spleen was pal pal palpatable. He also has developed a soft systolic murmur at his left lower sternal border that is increased with inspiration. Case 4. A 65-year-old female physician has noted increasing fatigue and malaise for the past from one to two months. When she takes her temperature, she is surprised to find it um, that it was uh, about 38 degrees by Celsius. She also noted some new lesions on her arm and nails. She is too busy to see her own physician. What finally brings her to medical attention in the development of red, painful swelling on the dorsum of her left foot? Her physician notes rot spots in both eyes and a loud mitral insufficiency murmur. Of note, she has a long standing history of mitral valve prolapse. The picture of her leg. Rot spots picture. Multiple blood cultures growth viridans streptococcus. Her laboratory studies reveal anemia of Crohn's disease and a positive rheumatoid factor test. Despite antibiotic therapy, she develops refractory heart failure and requires mitral valve replacement. It was four case studies. Diagnosis of endocarditis. 
According to the history and physician, the old fashioned way, laboratory studies such as microbiology, sustained positive blood cultures, other studies, hematologic, rheumatologic, renal, echocardiography, transesophageal echocardiography, so transthoracic echocardiography and transesophageal echocardiography are the best for diagnostic of endocarditis. Cutaneous manifestation of endocarditis, you can see splinter hemorrhages, also known and Genoa lesions. Mimics of infective endocarditis, it is atrial myxoma, morantic endocarditis, left atrial thrombus, acute rheumatic fever with carditis, collagen valvular disease, and sometimes new plasms such as carcinoid. Principles of treatment of infectious endocarditis. Bacterial antibiotics must be used. Prolonged therapy is necessary from four to six weeks. Treatment is best started after multiple sets of blood culture have been taken. Urgency in the initiation of therapy is required for acute but not subacute endocarditis. So, in acute endocarditis, it's necessary to start antibiotic treatment immediately. Synergistic combinations of antibiotics are used uh, when available. Antimicrobial um, prophylaxis of endocarditis. Potential mechanisms are bacterial activity to reduce bacterial adherence, reduce bacterial density in the wound uh, at the time of surgery. It's for prosthetic valves. Prevention of infective endocarditis. In the groups of high-risk patients. High-risk groups are prosthetic valves, complex congenital heart disease, previous endocarditis, moderate risk uh, in case of acquired valvular dysfunction, mitral valve prolapse with regurgitation, and negligible risk in mitral valve prolapse without regurgitation and traumatic fever without valvular dysfunction. Prophylaxis recommended or not? Dental procedures that involve uh, manipulation of gingival tissue, respiratory tract infected skin or skin structures. Prophylaxis not recommended for gastrointestinal or genitourinary procedures. Management. The new criteria were designed to, the, to, standard, to standardize diagnosis, but they provide little guidance for management. Although antibiotics are recommended for individuals who have defined infective endocarditis, the needs for treating uh, possible or even rejected endocarditis is not excluded in that scam. The diagnosis and treatment of infective endocarditis must be determined case by case. Management depend, depends on the assessing on the uh, reliability of the blood cultures uh, searching for underlying heart disease and occasionally on uh, determining rather arbitrably by con consciousness the presence or absence of infective endocarditis. Surgery. Indications for surgery during the acute phase of infective endocarditis are continued bacteremia after two weeks of up. Of up appropriate uh, therapy, fungal vegetations, abscess formation, worsen and heart failure due to valvular regurgitation caused by ru uh, ruptured leaflets or horde or systemic emboli. Patients eventually may require surgical intervention for chronic valvular stenosis or regurgitation uh, caused by previous infective endocarditis. Infective endocarditis related to a hemodynamically trivial ventricular septal defect warrants surgical repair following successful treatment of the infection. 
prognosis and outcomes. In absence of treatment, prognosis can be fatal. If it's especially acute or acute test define effective endocarditis, it's necessary to start antibiotic treatment immediately uh, during uh, from four to six weeks. So in absence of treatment, prognosis is fatal. Mortality rate depends on the infection. Uh, sometimes it can be 10%. Uh, in aspergillus, it will be about 100%. But cardiac surgery improves the survival. Poor pro prognosis is associated with having of heart failure, old age, aortic and multiple wealth involvement, large vegetations, and polymicrobial bacteremia. Resistance to antibiotics also will give us poor prognosis, a delay to the initiating therapy, mucotic aneurysms, well brain abscesses, major embolic events, causes of death are emboles, heart failure, bacterial shock, high risk of relapses is present. So repeated blood cultures should be taken in from two to six weeks after cessations of antibiotics. Antibiotics and then repeated blood cultures laboratory it's necessary to see and it was the end of the lecture and thank you for your attention